happy to be here? Yes. Are you glad to be here? Yes. Isn't the Lord good that he allows us to come on Wednesdays? Yes. It's a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please turn with me tonight in your Bibles to Revelation, third chapter, sixth through eighth verse. Revelation 3, 6, and 8. Here Jesus expresses his final message to the seven churches through John. Revelation was given to the churches in order to strengthen their faith. In order to encourage the churches to inspire them to be overcomers and to remain faithful. And as always, he was readying them for a second coming. The seven churches back then represent all the churches since and represent this church now. And it was revealed to them that there were issues in the church and that there was some serious deviation from Christ's standards. And he spoke to them and told them that they needed to turn away from any compromise and to turn away from sin. And he called them also to repent and to return to what? Their first love. And it was said to provide believers of all generations of the fierce conflict that they would have with Satan's evil forces. It was amazingly detailed if you study it. It was specific instruction of how they should move forward through today and beyond. You see, our God is not a God of the past. Our God is not a God of the past. He's a God of now, and He's a God of the future. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He was telling them, repent of your sins. He was telling them, get on fire for God. Individually and as a church. So let's read Revelation 3, 6 through 8. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So, he was speaking to everyone. If you have an ear, listen. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and he shuts and no man opens. Wow, I love that. Here, he's describing Jesus himself. Jesus is holy. Jesus is true. He has the key of David. The key indicates control. The key indicates authority. Praise God. And he that opens, no man can shut. And he that shuts, no man can open. He's explaining to them, to this church of Philadelphia. That's my Jesus tonight. And 8 says, listen closely please. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. 
I know your works. And I've set before you an open door. He knew those churches. He knew. He took each one of those churches and spoke to them and told them what was good and not so good. Amen? And he said, I know your works. Ooh. Here's a question for you tonight. Does he know your works? Does he? Does he know the works of this church? That's a daunting thought to me sometimes. I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For the church has little strength, little power, but you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. So, the way I look at this is he was a little critical of the church. You have little power. We're going to stop the reading right there. As he placed this scripture on my heart, and this message on my heart, I was absolutely touched by his word. And not only by the reading of his word, but how he spoke to me. Well, Brother Steve, did he speak to you audibly? No, he didn't. But it felt that way because he was speaking to my heart. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And he made it very clear to me in my thoughts that he wasn't just speaking to this church back in Philadelphia 2,000 years ago. He wasn't talking to that church alone or any of the churches, Laodicea or Smyrna or any of those. He's talking to this church today. Amen. Amen? I think that's exciting. Evangelical, full gospel assembly, St. Louis, Missouri. Do you believe that? Now I'm very careful with his word. Careful of what he places on my heart and what I put on my, in my own mind. And not to tell of that, but only to tell of what God has for us. And this word, I believe, is absolutely for us tonight. Right here, right now. And I'm not proclaiming to be a prophet or anything of that sort. But he was giving me his word on Monday for us today. He, he knew the works of, this, of that church back then, all of the churches back then. He knows the works of this church tonight. He knows and sees what's happening in each one of our hearts. Amen? He's telling us what we may be missing. He's telling us where we may fall short. Amen? For what's not right in our hearts. And he's telling us what we need to do in order to move forward. You can take it as correction. You can take it however you feel. It's a hard word, brother. Come on. I can't tell you the number of people that have come up to me and said, you know what, brother? I like the hard word. Why would we like the hard word? Because it maybe shows us where we fall short. Maybe where we need to improve. That maybe we're coasting a little bit. He spoke and said, there's unrepented sin in this place. And it must be cleared up and cleaned up. And it must be eradicated. And it re must be repented of. It's that simple. Sin is a barrier to God's work. Sin is a barrier to getting into revival. Sin is a barrier to God's blessings. 
It's a door closer. He talks about opening the door and closing the door. We're going to talk more about that in just a bit. But he knows our works. And he knows where we fall short. He certainly knows where this brother falls short. And he does often. And we can fool one another. Can we not? We can fool each other. And we can do things or, or think things that are done in secret. The Word of God talks about it. But what do we know ultimately? That God sees everything. Nothing is hidden from Him. And He has set before each one of us, I believe each one of us, individually and corporately, an open door. Can I say this? Open doors. And no man can shut it. What's an open door? What does that mean in the Bible? Access to spiritual opportunities. Access to spiritual blessings. An entrance to a breakthrough. A route or route or to a or pathway to revival and great blessings. It's flourishing, it's spiritual breakthrough, it's a God given opportunity. That's what an open door is. It's the door that leads us to heaven. Amen. And yes, he is correcting us, and he was correcting some of the churches back then. But he corrected with a purpose. And it wasn't to say, stop doing that, and I'll never forgive you. He never said that. What, was it, what is his purpose today of correction? To get us on the right path. I want to be on the right path. You so God, you go ahead and correct me because I need it. If there's unrepented sin out there, I need to repent of it. Holy Spirit, put that on my heart. Heavily. Get right with a brother or sister. It's a God-given opportunity. Thank you, Lord. And he's doing it, the correction, with great love. He's trying to restore us. Amen? I need to be restored from time to time. He wants to bring us to where He desires us to be. Isn't that good? Thank you, Lord. To place us on the solid rock. His love is so amazing, I can't even begin to describe it. Thank you, Lord, for your unfathomable love. How you can love me and some of the stuff I've, I've thought or said or done has been so wrong. But I can have you to go to and ask for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Where would you be without Jesus? We'd be lost. An open door. A symbol of spiritual opportunity. An open door. You see, he's clearing our vision to see through that open door. Because sometimes in this life, my vision gets blurred with the things of this life and all the things and stuff that's going on. It can get blurred. But he's clearing that vision so we can see through that door and approach that path that goes to the door. And do what? Walk through it. And it may not be the easiest thing that he's asking you to go through that open door for. It may be very difficult. But will he leave you alone? Will you walk through the door by yourself? I don't think so. You're going to walk through the door with Jesus. You're going to walk through the door with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He's making and lighting the path to the open door. And he can only lead us to that open door. He's not going to push us through the open door. 
That's our choice. But we must walk through that door. As I was thinking about this and studying God's word, thinking about shutting the door and nobody, 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 it's an open door and nobody can shut it. But I say, maybe there is somebody that can shut it. It's me. I can shut that door. Why? How can I? It'll stay open. It'll stay open, but I'm temporarily or maybe even permanently shutting it closed. Because I'm not equipped to do that, Lord. Whatever you're calling me to do, I can't do that. But I have to walk through that open door in faith believing. Because guess what? My God has proven to me over and over and over again that I, when I do something for him, he's going to equip me in order to do it. Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. Are you here tonight? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. It's an advancement. And can I say this? He speaks in the verse about us having little strength, little power. He desires us to have much strength and much power. To do as much as we can for God's glory. Amen? He wants us to follow his path and the door that he's opened wide for us. Is it good just to be satisfied with status quo? I don't think I'm going to walk through that door. Maybe the next one you open, God. Well, there may not be a next one. Is it a great an honor and privilege that he opens doors for us to work for him, to work for his kingdom, to advance the kingdom? Yes, it is. He wants... He doesn't want little strength, like he said to this church. He doesn't want us to have a little power. He wants us to have a lot of strength and a lot of power. Amen? This came on me so strongly. He wants a church on fire for God. I love these three young people that came here this weekend. Those kids were not in, inhabited or they weren't um, inhibited, excuse me. They weren't inhibited in any way. They didn't know us, but they did feel something. What did they feel? Spirit of God, same spirit, the Holy Spirit. The same spirit speaking to them as speaking to us. And we had a beautiful, beautiful, blessed Sunday morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And when I talked to the brother, the brother from the Netherlands, he spoke about the Holy Spirit and how it was alive in this place. The Holy Spirit needs to be alive in this place every service. Praise God. He's offering up an open door to us tonight. 2 Corinthians 2 and 12. This is Paul. Paul on his journey. I love studying Paul in his great journey through life and how God changed him. And it says, When I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Jesus, the Lord did what for him? Open the door of opportunity for him. You see, when there's an open door that God puts in front of you, he never fails to give you what you need. To get through that door and, and answer that call. Whatever that call is. That's exciting for me. I've taken on some responsibilities in the past that I looked around and said, are you talking to me? Right? I know some of the, some of the other brothers and sisters in this place have done the same thing. I'm not this. I'm not that. And you're probably right. But I'm not going through this alone. If Jesus is calling me to do it, then I can do it. It's, what does it say? I can do all things. Amen. Praise God. This very church tonight 
Evangelical Full Gospel Assembly has an open door of opportunity. Pray about it. Seek his face. What does he want from you? I need to be praying for more opportunities. How about you? And I've begun to do that. I waited a little long, but I, I want to do that. I want to do what God wants me to do because he has opened doors for me and I need to go through them, whatever they are, how difficult they may seem. Praise God. And he's saying, make the most of the opportunity. Take advantage of the opportunity that, that I'm giving you. Praise God. He's giving us open doors to advance his kingdom. Who's going to advance his kingdom if we don't? He could do it all on his own. That's not the plan. The plan is for us to work for him. We need to stop being so selfish. I'm speaking for myself. We need to stop being so, can I say this? I'll say it for me only, lazy. And ask God what he desires from me today. You want me to talk to somebody, Lord? Take advantage of it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to call you to be a pastor. Maybe he will. Or a deacon. Or a teacher. Maybe it's something simple. Ask yourself the question tonight. What is your open door right now? And if you don't have an open door, ask God for an open door. An open door of opportunity. How can I further your kingdom, Lord? Are we praying for open doors? We need to do that individually and as a church. How is this church going to grow? There's open doors out there. Are we going through them? Praise God. You know, it can be as simple as talking to a friend. A friend that may have some issues. We've all had people we know like that, or a neighbor, or a coworker, or a classmate that have problems, that have situations, that maybe say when you're talking to them, I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do next. I have all these things in front of me, and I don't know where to go. It's a perfect opportunity. That's a big open door. Go through it. It's an opportunity for us to share Jesus with them. It's an opportunity to share our experiences with Jesus with them. It's our opportunity to witness to them, to share God with them. What an honor. What a privilege. It's an honor to have an opportunity to pray with them. And you know what? They may say, you may ask them, can I pray with you right now? And they may say no. And when people tell us no, we don't like that. But that's okay. What can we do? Just say, okay, brother. Okay, sister. And you go and get in the car or you go home and do what? You pray for them. Thank you, Lord. It's a great opportunity for you to invite them to Sunday school. It's a great opportunity for you to invite them to Bible class. To invite them to church or a prayer meeting. Is it not? And yes, they may tell you no. That's okay. Keep praying for them. Keep talking to them. Praise God. I'm not going to try to embarrass her, Sister Bella. But our sister, and I'm not trying to lift her up either, and she knows this, but our sister invites her classmates to come to church, 
to come to youth group. And they have. And just recently, this young sister, Rebecca, I'm not sure the conversation, it doesn't matter. But the young lady, our sister here, felt it on her heart to do what? To invite her to youth group. And she came. To invite her to Sunday school. And she came. And to invite her to church services. And she came. Isn't it wonderful? Praise God. And I know there's been a lot of folks that have done that within. My, my, my memory goes quickly to our sister Dana Muskoff. And I don't want to embarrass her either. But she and I worked together. But before that, we were, we were looking for a, a high-level position, a trust administrator to hire. And she came along. And she had all the great qualifications and had, had the right personality and all those things. And she, and as part of an executive committee, I interviewed her. And at the end of the day, they said, yes or no? And I have to tell you, I said no. Because of something she said. But I'm going to tell you something. God had a different plan, you see. God said, oh yes, and I was overruled. And thank God I was overruled. And she, began to, she came into my office a couple times. and said, what are you doing this weekend? I said, oh, uh, I'm teaching an adult Bible class. And, and one time she came in and said, could I come to that? Now, I should have been on the other end of that and said, hey, why don't you come? She asked me, thank you, Lord. And I said, absolutely. And she came. And into a couple of meetings or so, and I can't remember exactly when, she asked me the question, and I've said this many times. She goes, now you all don't speak in tongues, do you? And I said, we need to talk about that. We need a little time. But God had a plan. It wasn't Brother Steve's plan. He had a silly reason not to hire her. But God had the plan. And here she is how many years later? 2000. So 15, 15 years later. She says, and I'm not lifting this sister up either. She's a Sunday school teacher. Baptized with that Holy Ghost that she was asking about. Praise God. Nothing that I did, but oh Lord, it was an open door. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And he, he equips us to go through that open door. And I'm so thankful. Praise God. Sisters, would you come forward? Brothers and sisters, I believe with all my heart that God is speaking to us each one of us here in this church right now. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. This church is not a museum. This church is not a museum. You know what a museum is, don't you? Sometimes when we're with Brother Dennis, he likes to go to the museums. Not so much for me. I'm not that cultured. You go to the museums and there's stuff sitting on a shelf or placed somewhere and you look at it. And you go, oh, right? Don't be a museum. This church should not be a museum. It should be on fire for God. It's an open door he's given us to be on fire for him. Aren't you excited about that? Praise God. I'm excited about what God has for us. But we got to go through the door. He's given us open doors. Every one of us has to play a part. We can't be inactive. We have to participate. You can't just sit there. That's a museum. Praise God. God has a great work for all of us. In 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, here's my friend Paul again. Speaking of his journey, and I love this verse, it says in the King James, it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. He's talking about himself. 
a great door is open to him, but there will be many adversaries. There will be those that try to stop the work. We've seen it before. When we've gone through an open door, it's not just, oh yeah, that's easy, yeah, okay. It's not always like that. You're going to run into some things. And if I could read it in, the, in a couple other translations, it may make a little more sense. He says, there is a wide door for great work here, although many will oppose me. And finally, it says in the NIV, because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there will be many who oppose it. This is our friend Paul. Paul. He prayed for opportunities. Where was he when he prayed a lot and sang? In jail. I think I'd have given up a long time ago and say, Lord, I don't know about this open door thing and it's not so great. But he was joyous that God picked him. He was honored that God chose him. Praise God. So good tonight. Thank you, Lord. God presented Paul with an open door and he took the opportunity and he accepted the opportunity and he went through that door. And what did God do? He blessed his work so greatly. Isn't that good? Does he want to bless this work greatly? Walk through the door. It's an open door. Brother Steve, walk through that open door. I've had plenty that I've, I've not gone through. Shame on me. Forgive me, Lord. And finally, Colossians 4 and 3, it's Paul again. And he said, And pray for us too that God may open a door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Ugh, that's a little rough too. Oh no, it's not. He's in chains. Why? Because he's a prisoner of God's. And tonight, it may say, sound negative, but brothers and sisters, it's very positive. We are, should be in chains for Christ. We should be a prisoner of Christ. We should be a prisoner of what he desires us to do. Amen? I'm excited tonight. When God put, I have nothing, but when God put this on my heart the other day, I go, open door. It's an open door. It's an open door for us, and I can't wait to get up and talk about it. I can't wait to get up and preach it. Thank you, Lord. It's an open door. A prisoner of God. We're going to close here. Ask for open doors. Ask for open doors in your life. Ask for opportunities. Seek open doors. Accept open doors. And walk through the open doors that he set before us. Amen? Isn't God good? May the name of the Lord be praised. Praise God.